All right, so we meet again uh, for this course and let us see what we did in the last meeting. We did glance through the auxiliaries that are essential for printing. <coughs> we also understood uh, various isotherms which are applicable to different class of dyes like Langmuir, Frandlich and Nurst. And also learned that wet dyes and solubilized wet dyes are good for printing and actually solubilized wet dyes can print protein fibers as well. And also learned that reactive dyes are good not only for cellulosics but also protein fibers. In fact, we can spend a little more time here again just to uh, recollect as to what can be done with reactive dyes. So, we continue with our uh, journey and we will consider more dyes and pigments which are used in the conventional printing system which are likely to give good fastness properties after printing. So, reactive dyes we did talk about. So, we said this is one reactive group where you have two chlorine and so this is called the dichlorotriazine type of reactive dye, but the chromophore is somewhere here, right. And this type of dye we thought is not good for printing because it is more reactive and we would prefer such dyes which would not react at all at least at room temperature you have to take it to 60 degrees to 80 degrees before they fix. And so one of the ways the same group was modified is that you have only one chlorine and so you have a monochlorotriazine group similar dye but this is the change that you make. And so, this is sometimes known as the hot brand dye as well and so they are the ones which will be preferred for dyeing compared to the one which is on the top. All the dyes are water soluble as we know because of some groups like this. So, this is the solubilizing group. And so, they are water soluble and so, we will make paste in aqueous medium. So, initially whether in dyeing or printing we would like first the diffusion to take place inside the fiber and then chemical bonding which obviously we believe is a covalent bonding that will take place. So, this is true that we must make sure that this happens. So, there are other types of reactive groups also like vinyl sulfone and uh, their conditions are also different of fixation. So, there are uh, possibilities of using different uh, reactive groups, but all of them should be such which give you uh, an advantage in terms of reactivity being little low. So, if we again recall the specific requirement for printing is that the temperature of printing or fixation should be high. Fastness would be said if everything has reacted covalently the fastness will be the excellent fastness there is no issue on that as far as the wash fastness is concerned. A light fastness depend on the chemical structure and not on the reaction alone. So, if most of us have found it difficult to believe that the reactive dyed and reactive printed fabrics actually give fastness less than 5 is because some of the dye does not react but stays back. We did talk about substantivity versus reactivity. So, moderate reactivity is a good idea not very high reactivity. So, all the molecules that you make will have moderate reactivity substantivity also towards the fiber should not be very high. 
because in case particularly in the cellulosic case if there are hydrolyzed dyes which are formed because we are looking at reaction with the hydroxyl group of cellulose and water also has the same situation. So, this can cause hydrolyzed dye if the conditions are as good as for reaction with cellulose and therefore, right, the problem is not of fixation alone, the problem is storage of the printing paste. The printing paste is made sometimes for almost a week, the main paste and the dye is added maybe for the whole day and so we keep printing, but we must make sure that while it is in the paste, it does not react. That is one of the important things and obviously, we will be storing the paste at room temperature. So, highly reactive dye which will require less temperature to get fixed, temperature is one of the important parameters which can be fixed to vary the time of fixation etcetera and so that is not a good idea. As far as the dyeing is concerned, we do cold pad batch method where the dye solution is prepared very quickly alright and then you pad and then you pad with an alkali and then you batch alright. So, one has to take precautions. Once it is on the fiber and there is no water, not much water, then slowly it can get fixed at room temperature. But printing the paste duration is large, so you do not prefer that kind of thing. Substantivity as we said uh, would be low, relatively low, it is not that there should not be substantive at all then it will not go to the fiber, although it is not an exhaust process. You take a screen or a block or whatever, you actually put it there wherever you want the dye to be there and so dye cannot run away and the concentrations are also high. And so it is going to diffuse, but it should not be repelling, you know, it should not be something like hydrophobic fiber versus a hydrophilic dye. So that is not a good idea. But affinity should be there, but not very high substantivity. Like every time we wanted to do good fastness properties, we always wanted high substantivity. So, that goes more towards the fiber, but here the mechanism of fixation is chemical bonding. So, even if it is once it goes in and then gets fixed, then the wash fastness does not depend on whether it is substantive or it is not substantive, it will be fixed. Uh, that is the advantage in reactive dyes. Substrate that would be said, cellulosic, cotton, viscose, rayon, no doubt that is for basically reactive dyes initially were synthesized for these, but all these reactive dyes can dye very easily. All protein fibers as also nylon the end amino groups is good enough to be reacted and do not require alkaline medium. And if you do not require alkaline medium, hydroxyl group will not react, that is water will not react and therefore, you will have less hydrolyzed dye and so for the protein fibers, pH being different is a much better option and the reaction takes place. And if anything, any dye which is not reacted is not uh, hydrolyzed also. So, this is what we just talked about that pH for the protein and nylon are going to be neutral and little acidic and so no hydrolyzed dye is going to be formed. So, that is the biggest advantage. So, we do have other type of dye which are called bifunctional. Hmm? They are from the dyeing purposes, they are known as high exhaust dyeing. So, they have two reactive groups. 
this reactive group is called vinyl sulfone right so this is there are two reactive groups instead of one and therefore they are called bifunctional reactive dyes so you must appreciate here also there are two chlorine but this is not called bifunctional dye these chlorines are on the same reactive group so bifunctional dyes are the ones which have two different reactive groups they can be homo bifunctional like this both are vinyl sulfone or they can be hetero bifunctional which could be one could be triazenyl the other could be vinyl sulfone or any other reactive group which you make so those will be called the bifunctional reactives and uh, as a percentage if you look at fixation they get exhausted well and in the dye bath printing doesn't have that issue and they also require higher temperature because you are choosing such type of reactive group which requires higher temperature so they are stable so they are pretty good for the printing all these fiber so bifunctional dyes are good then the acid dyes so common is like anthraquinone based dyes and also azo based dyes so you have this group and the anthraquinone by itself as a reactive group sometimes people do ask they also have solubilizing group direct dyes also have solubilizing group they are also anionic in nature these are also anionic in nature so sometimes people want to know what is the difference between direct dye and an acid dye so that difference i think you will recall whenever you go back hmm? try to understand what is the difference between the two types of dyes both are anionic okay and theoretically the kind of fiber that we uh, use these for they will have positive charge they have negative charge so they can go there as well make ionic bond so they are acid dyes they are generally organic acids and therefore they are the acid dyes so they are basically acids so you can actually react them alkali and you will make sodium salts right other than also we 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 other than the solubilizing group as well so one important thing is they are applied through acidic medium so when you have acidic medium so they would they would not have so much of a problem but the fiber which is the substrate wool silk and nylon can also be any kind of nylon so you have wool silk nylon all of them will assume a positive charge and so anything which is negatively charged will get attracted and so we'll have various controlling mechanisms to make sure the right kind of bondings are formed so di fiber interaction is ionic wash fastness is can be an issue because they are smaller molecules and ionic bonds hmm, in aqueous medium they dissociate ions are dissociate very easily and so although they are good dyes they go very nicely and get printed also very nicely but wash fastness can be an issue so for dyeing anyway we use them for printing you may like to say well little larger molecule more molecular weight may be a good idea so that the wash fastness also improves because there is no other mechanism of fixation except making ionic bond right unlike reactive dyes so they are water soluble and they make only ionic bonds and therefore they can come okay so if the molecule molecular weight becomes high then obviously wash fastness can improve and that's what people will like to do 
and because of that you may get uh, some advantage by using modern dyes okay so metal complex dyes which are already there either the complex is pre metallized so you already made the complex as a larger molecule or you make the complex later in some way or the other in printing you may like to have metal complex die rather than just a or you have to print with a mordant first or a pad with a mordant first and then print the mordant die and so you can get the complex formation there so one one of those things will have to be done and then the advantage definitely comes the word fastness so for printing you may like to use metalized pre metalized or metal complex dies also in whichever manner that you want to use so this uh, you should try to get the information from wherever from your previous uh, classes that you've learned what is the chemistry that helps the dye in complex formation why any dye forms a complex we are looking at metallized complexes here so what are the essential features of a modern dye and how are the metal complex dyes different from modern dyes so modern dyes are there and how the metal comes so modern dyes can have different modern also complex formation so you may like to check these out and uh, keep the note with you the next dies which obviously are very interesting dies and uh, these dies called basic dies or sometimes cationic dies sir the die has a positive charge in the conditions that we use them and so they are called cationic dyes initially these dyes were used for cotton cellulosic fabrics as well using a different kind of a modern but mostly they are going to be used for printing acrylic fibers or fabrics so they are called basic dyes because they are bases the acid dyes were called acid dyes because they are acids because they are bases therefore they can interact with an acid all right that's an important part interestingly because of their structures this one which has been shown then you have triphenyl methane based cationic dyes high tinctorial value when tinctorial value high generally means is they can actually absorb radiation from the ultraviolet region and also radiate out in the visible region so actually they appear more brilliant than other dyes so that's the way the structure is and so you love those colors in general very nice so the similar looking dye which is similar structure which is an acid dye after some change it is a base becomes a basic dye the next the other structure obviously looks more brighter its counterpart an acid dye looks not so bright little duller than compared to the brighter so high tinctorial value so these are also dyed from aqueous medium and what is the ph what is the ph of dyeing according to you acidic ph so acidic ph is required only in the acidic ph this group gets generated otherwise you will not be able to dye and the because they are cationing the anion comes from substrate which is acrylic if somebody ask you what is the anionic part in the acrylic fiber what is the anion in the acrylic fiber acid to reaching the polymerization 
all right. So, during the manufacture you can either have a copolymerization which will be acidic or based on the polymerization method your initiators which could be sulphides, bisulphides and so on and so forth they get at, they remain attached at the end of the chain and so that is how the negative group is there in the acrylic fibers. The fastness generally is good as I mentioned some time back also. If the molecular size is high the wash fastness will be good. As such acrylic fabrics if they are used they themselves are hydrophobic in nature and therefore the interaction with the water is not as nice as with the hydrophilic fibers and so once the dye goes in then the dye goes in. Of course the temperature etc are important, pH of course is important. As far as the printing is concerned you have to be careful. Uh, acrylic fibers are sensitive to heat and so they can get yellow and so you have to optimize the fixation conditions carefully. Light fastness of these dyes is also good. Acrylic fibers being hydrophobic they have less of moisture but the bond is ionic and so the radiation energy uh, which is absorbed by the dye and the chromophore is the dye actually is able to transfer the energy to the fiber and remains safe. And so light fastness of these dyes on cationic dyes on acrylic fibers is also pretty good. So you may note down from somewhere what is called a tinctorial value, why the basic dyes have high tinctorial value, learn a little more about it and uh, keep it in your notes. Dispersed dyes as the name suggests they are dispersed in solution and so they are not water soluble. So compared to the previous one this is the major difference that we see and you can see in a dye molecule example that is there there is no solubilizing group. But they could be smaller molecules but not water soluble, so they remain in particulate form. Whenever a situation comes when it is not water soluble, it is not soluble then the molecules like to come together and that is the way thermodynamic works, so they like each other and you get particulates matter. But it is not a zero solubility you know it is a limited solubility because they are called dyes. If they were absolutely insoluble then they would be pigments right. So in water they have solubility but very less solubility and this is the whole trick that the most the dye remains in a particulate form, small amount of dye get dissolved like in a printing the, the total amount of water available is also very less but it gets dissolved of course temperature and solubility are related. So if you have higher temperature solubility will be more of a dispersed dye even within the in the aqueous medium also and so once it is in molecular form it then diffuses in and they have to be applied on substrates which are hydrophobic, relatively more hydrophobic. And so the name comes polyester as far as the textile people are concerned. So these dyes originally were made synthesized much before the polyester came into the market because we had acetate fibers which was not able to take and could not be dyed and printed with the conventional dye that were available. So they had to think about, so the structure architecture of the molecule has changed with over the period. 
But when the polyester came, the, the dye is just made for them. Polyester is hydrophobic, the dye is hydrophobic, the bond is pretty nice, the wash fastness should not have any problem and so it was good. They can be dyed and printed onto acrylic, they can also be printed on nylon, all right. But generally we find that it is the polyester which is this major substrate for printing with dispersed dyes. With nylon there has been one issue that the glass transition temperature of a nylon fiber or fabric in water goes down and goes below room temperature. In a dry state the glass transition temperature is close to 70 or 80 degrees, but when you put it in water the glass transition temperature goes down. And what it means is there is a lot of mobility at room temperature and when you wash. And so the wash fastness of the same dye on a nylon is not good, although it is supposed to be not water soluble, but that is one. It can be dyed and printed onto acrylic, but not very popular because the tinctorial value of these dyes is not as bright as the cationic dyes on acrylic. And so the preference obviously is towards the cationic dye rather than the dispersed dye. Difficult to dye but polypropylene can also be dyed with and printed with also uh, dispersed dyes, but you have to adjust. Can we print polyester with display? Of course. So what method is used? Any methods, all kinds of methods can be used. All you have to do is the fixation condition. The fixation condition could be dry heat, superheated steam and such type of things. So at temperatures which are higher, polyester is very responsive very responsive and so the dye diffuses. You have thermosol methods also, so you can use uh, different fixation techniques, but it will, once it goes in, it just goes in and you will be happy. So dispersed polyester combination is one of the best combinations that you have. The wash fastness. So, the cationic diable polyester is a different polyester. So your aim is to dye and a print with a different type of a dye and not disperse. If you make it very ionic, then there will be issues of affinities, okay. So we are looking at the normal polyester which is the 8, 90 percent of the substrate that you see everywhere in the market. So that is the major thing. The cationic diable percentage wise will be hardly any. You can make it and of course then you will take the cationic dye, that is your preference. But if you want to dye a cationic diable polyester with a dispersed dye, you may be able to dye and print, but what is the point? Dispersed dye can just go very easily on a polyester, why do you want to modify the polyester and then dye with the dispersed dye? That is costly also. So where wash fastness should not be a problem, light fastness depends on the molecular structure, there is no other way. Uh, so depends on which type of a molecule the fastness will be determined. Perspiration fastness also does not have so much of effect. Rubbing is not an issue because it does not become particulate as such goes in unless and until uh, something is as a particulate get deposited on the surface. In case that happens, then you will have to do some post treatment to remove those particles, otherwise no problem. But 
new problem is there with these dye which is called the sublimation which the other dyes did not have the new sublimation issues are there so these dyes can sublime so if temperatures are suitable you can say the shade is changing or that's not even a problem dye from one gets migrated to some other portion where you didn't want it even storage high temperature storing if suppose is there so that becomes a problem sublimation fastness the new fastness which has to be checked on the dispersed dyes So, the, they have defined now the dyes with the, based on the molecular weight, high energy, medium energy and low energy dyes. So, if you actually are printing with the low energy dyes, then you have a more sublimation issue. If you are really looking at fastness, better fastness, then you are looking at high molecular weight which is high energy dyes. That means you require higher energy for sublimation and so they will not sublime. So, that selection has to be made. So, whenever you want to do printing, the data sheet provided by the dye manufacturer becomes your one of the first guidelines to choose the dye because you do not want to have all problems that are related. So, it would not have wash fastness, sublimation fastness can be an issue. Azoic colors, well, these are formed in C2 that means on the substrate itself and one of the reason is these dyes uh, or colors are also not water soluble. So, you have two components one is called a base and the other is called an aphthol and so uh, you mix them in a right way in right condition suddenly the azo group generates. Okay. So, chromophore is an azo group and this generates when the diazotized you know base is reacted with an aphthol all right so affinity of an aphthol comes in issue so what kind of an aphthol you want but this is a very interesting thing to learn and see is that same aphthol can give different colors with different bases and same base can give different colors with different naphthols and so one of the easiest way to m synthesize a molecule the azo group synthesis is easy but how do we print if you remember dyeing what you were doing in dyeing you had to diazotize the base to make it salt and the temperatures had to be kept have to be kept around 5 degrees or below and the whole process therefore is a tough process and how do we print that so, but they started uh, you know modified diazonium salts which could be stabilized so that they can be stored as it is and you dissolve them in directly in water and use you do not have to diazotize. So, such type of things will have to be used for printing purposes. You can pad through a naphthol and then do the printing with a stabilized salt and then go for a fixation. Cotton of course, cellulose and is of course the, the kind of substrate which generally will be used for this uh, these type of colors. Because the reaction is so quick, it is actually spontaneous, the color development is so spontaneous. So, much before you say I am fixing, the color is there, right, you can dry it. it you have to be very careful in washing of course because all the things that you have done you have to remove but the color develops so people have used various kinds of technique like spray you know you you pad through an aphthol and then spray different bases and you get all kinds of multicolored effects uh, on the fabrics because it's so quick so you, without even a paste that's the interesting you know you can you can have a paste and print the way you want to print but you can have the solution and through which also you can spray and get some kind of design which you may like which are uh, quite interesting. Fastness, rubbing fastness is the only thing which you should be worried about. Uh, 
be wet and dry both. Otherwise, they are water insoluble compounds. So, if, if they are done nicely, the padding is nice, the temperatures and conditions are good, uh, the wash fastener should not have a problem. So, what is the difference between azo dyes and azoic colors? The azoic colors are formed in C2 and azo dyes are formed somewhere else and azo dyes can be dispersed, reactive, direct, all classes you can have. Within this printing, uh, one set of colors is called illuminating colors. Illuminating colors are for the discharge style of printing. So, you have a background which is the fabric has been dyed with some dye and we want to discharge that dye. So, that is fine, you use your reducing agents to discharge the dye from the portions that you have. So, you can get a discharge area which would be hopefully white, but if you want colored discharge, in that case you got to choose some colors which are not dischargeable or difficult to discharge. In the conditions that you use, you know, a very strong condition everything can be discharged but that time your fabric also may get damaged. But in a reducing environment that we actually want to discharge, so there are colors for example, cationic dyes, anthraquinone based dyes, they do not very easily get discharged. So, the triphenyl methane based dyes are highly uh, non-dischargeable. And so, if you in your paste, discharge paste, if you use them, then you can get color discharge as well. Right? So, you have uh, this thing which normally we have not been talking in the condition in the in the context of dyeing, but in the conductor printing we do have the illuminate, illuminating colors. Then there are pigments. In printing, they are very helpful particularly if you have uh, blends. Dyeing of blends also is difficult. Printing of blend is not less difficult, two different fibers wanting two different dyes and in case your fibers are not uh, of the same uh, chemical uh, structure, then you got to have two different types of dyes, two different types of uh, conditions to be used for fixation, just difficult. But if you have pigment, they do not like any fiber, they have nothing to do with the fiber. So, they can be printed on any kind of a blend. Of course, they can be printed on single fiber fabrics also. So, how do we print? Obviously, we, we have the same way, you have a paste uh, and then you got to have some kind of a binding system. So, film has to be formed and once you make a film is the film and the fastness of the film uh, which determines how fast the pigments prints will be. Can the same compound be called a dye or a pigment? Surely, anything which does not go at a molecular level can be pigment and you can use them. But of course, uh, there are specially designed pigments for doing certain things. Because when you add something else on the surface of a fabric, then the third component also has to be handled from the point of durability. So, that is the only reason why somebody will still like to have dyes for printing rather than just pigments for printing, right. But these days and one of the reasons was also the, the binder. You know, it makes a film and if it is a stiff film, then the handle etcetera issues can come. But these days, a lot of research has gone into making flexible films, very, very flexible films. Some of the chemistry 
of pigments like azo based pigments are there which could give you yellows, oranges, reds quite a lot that is the kind of range that you can get. The naphthalene based, anthraquinone based and there are two other uh, interesting series which is perylene based pigments and the quinacridon based pigments. They are very fast and very brilliant. They give oranges, reds and violets. So, range is pretty good. Then there are uh, thalocyanin derivatives which have got some metal like copper. So, copper based thalocyanin derivatives you know if you remember you had direct dyes also based on thalocyanin derivatives blues and greens can be obtained uh, using thalocyanin. So, they are the beautiful blues and so you have a range of oranges and reds and uh, violets also. Just an example of one or two. So, this so that you remember there is a molecule like this also perylene tetra carboxylic dianhydride. So, if it was a carboxylic acid, it could be hydrophilic. An anhydride is obviously less hydrophilic. So, it is going towards thing and no effort is being made to increase substantivity. So, this is the kind of a molecule that would be there, but of course, you can keep changing add a nitro or a chloro or all kinds of things can be added. So, you can see there is an anhydride on this side and there is an anhydride on this side. So, interesting type of a chemistry perylene. So, you have tetra carboxylic acid, carboxylic 1, carboxylic 2, 1 anhydride, carboxylic 3, carboxylic 4, another anhydride. So, quin acridone group of uh, things give generally yellowish red to violet kind of shades they can give and uh, this is an interesting molecule you are quite a familiar with anthraquinones and so on and so forth, but it is slightly different chemistry. So, you have almost 5 aromatic rings connected together and of course, there is this own part of it. So, you have a carbonyl group which uh, makes this acridone and so you have large number of pigments based on this as well. I mean, you know, pigments are not just used for textiles, they are used for paints, plastics, everything. So, one of the advantages sometimes is that you can go for little high temperature like a molten material and you can add it, nothing will happen to this stability. If you have like a dispersed dye you want to use in let us say molten polyester, at that temperature you might find it is all subliming, you know. So, it is not easy to get to that type of situation. So, one always uh, has to choose things. So, pigments are from this kind of range as well. So, this one interesting compound, this you must have seen, this is the copper thalocyanin, all right. Beautiful blue it gives. Almost turquoise. And so, this type of shade is not very easy to obtain and so, this can be used as a pigment. There are no solubilizing group here, there is nothing there, you can use this as a pigment. But if you add chlorine all over, look how many chlorines have been added. So, only at one portion it appears there is no chlorine, everywhere there is chlorine.
man is until somebody says you can't use chlorine compound because they are not environmental friendly so you may not use it but it gives green you know from blue to green a similar compound just a change in a beautiful green it gives and there are large number of inorganic pigments also some of them can be used for textile printing also but generally they are used for paints ceramics glass and high temperature resistant and you can fuse them melt the glass and insert them various techniques people use all the churches old churches that you see all the colored glasses all over the place so in organic compounds are used the maximum and thing in ceramics and so on so forth so pigment are not generally sold as powders a dye is available in powders for example then you dissolve them with a wetting agent and make a paste and do everything else and uh, here because this process may be little difficult and so the chemical manufacturers are uh, supplying emulsions the particle size you can see is uh, quite small right 0.03 to 0.5 micrometers okay so that's the micron actually isn't it what is the diameter of fiber a normal textile fiber approximate generally a polyester fiber available uh, approximate diameter rough you don't have to be exact because all diameters are different in terms of microns 50 microns 50 microns quite a uh, coarse fiber is like wool but polyester could be 10, 10 microns and so on so forth so what is important is the size of this particle has to be less than you know that although you're not looking at uh, any diffusion the particle will not settle on diffuse but if there's a large particle first of all the rubbing fastness will be a problem you will see something sticking on the fabric this will not actually be seen as if something extra is there naked eye will not be able to see the particle you don't want to see actually see oh there are lot of particles here so it will look like this very uniformly printed system so as i said aqueous pigment paste a dispersion medium generally is obviously water very easy to evaporate later after the whole process has been done surfactants which are used uh, generally would have an hlb you understand hlb hydrophilic lyophilic balance of a molecule should be over 10 normally non ionic dispersing agents are used for uh, making emulsion uh, they are based on ethylene oxide condensates uh, with various alcohol series which could be there so this is what actually makes it you know the balance from this carbon and the oxygen or ethylene oxide groups so their their balancing has to be done generally available as 20% solids okay so rest is whatever water mainly so this hlb in some way or the other has to be balanced so hlb value of uh, non ionic surfactants griffin had defined the range from 0 to 20 there are other ways of measuring hlb also but this is one of the ways so 0 to 20 0 is more lyophilic obviously and 20 is very hydrophilic 
and what it means is can be calculated 20 multiplied by m h over m and what are these m h is the molecular mass of the hydrophilic portion and m is the molecular mass of the whole molecule. So, the ratio of this multiplied by 20. So, you ethylene oxide you will control the hydrophobic part you will control as the mass is concerned and the balance you have to keep. So, less than 10 if it is there they are lipid soluble that is they are soluble in oil and so on and so forth more soluble and if they are more than 10 they are more water soluble. So, obviously you will be using for our purposes water soluble surface active agents. Okay. So, binder is required because pigment does not have any affinity for fiber. Therefore, we said blends also is no problem binary or a tertiary whichever blend that you want you can use them and so you require a binder. It is the binder which is more important as far as this is concerned color of course comes from there. And these binders are also polymeric substances or they are pre polymers which can be polymerized during curing. So, you have a pad dry cure sequence, pad print cure sequence not pad actually sorry print dry and cure. So, a print dry cure sequence. So, the curing during curing the reaction and polymerization will take place. So, you will have obviously some catalyst there to help it out and uh, are also sold as dispersions. So, you have a pigment dispersion, you have a binder dispersion, they can all be mixed very easily and then you got to have a thickener. So, some of the monomers that are used for making binders are vinyl chloride, okay. so unsaturated acrylic based, acrylonitrile based and vinyl ether, styrene, butadiene. These kind of uh, monomers can be used along with each other or otherwise to get to some binder which will give relatively more softer uh, film that means the glass transition temperature of the binder film should be very low. If the glass transition is high it will become stiffer, if the glass transition temperature is low so that is the uh, calculation that you have to do that is the manipulation that you have to do. The binder manufacturers, the printer does not do anything, it just uses them. But obviously, there is a chemistry involved. So, part of the chemistry is not bad idea to recall. So, today we stop here. We have learnt something about dyes and pigments that can be used for printing textiles different kinds. Next time we will see uh, whether we talk more about thickening agents and things and before we take some other topic. Thank you.